Hello everyone, if you're an RV owner like me, you're probably familiar with that fill your tank and run inside little shuffle, that little dance between running from the passenger to the driver's side of your vehicle over here inside the RV to hit one of these buttons to read where your tanks are at. And there has to be an easier way, and there is. Sea level has a tank monitoring system here Oops, that is Bluetooth enabled. And today we're going to show you how to install it. Alright, so now, besides the fact that this is Bluetooth and I'll be able to monitor my tank filling situations from outside the vehicle, another benefit of the system, number one for this one, it has LP, so I'll be able to monitor my uh, onboard tank. This being a motorhome, I already have a tank that's bolted into the vehicle, so I'll be able to monitor that tank from this thing, and I'll show you a little bit more on that later. The real beauty of the system is in the way it measures the, the waste in the tanks. Most tanks use metal sensors that are inside the tank and they're prone to fouling. This is a brand new RV and I've already had an issue with one, my black tank, uh, one light kept flickering, giving me a false reading. And I've done the, done the rinse outs and all that stuff, but I mean, I still had a, a problem once and then on my last trip, uh, we we're heading down to the Keys and it said I had water. I had a third of a tank of water. I usually don't carry a lot of fresh water because we're always on hookups. You know, if I'm going to boondock, I'll make sure that thing's full or what I need. You know, there's no point carrying an extra like 45 gallons of water. That's a lot of weight to carry. So as soon as we left, all of a sudden it told me my water was empty. I mean, I knew I had some, but the problem is that the way the sensors are, are laid out, you really don't know how much water you have. So that's the beauty of these that they go on there and it uses like a signal it emits a signal and it picks up exactly where you're at so you'll know exactly where your thing is you're not going to get one third two third and then all of a sudden full and it's like oh man now you're like freaking out either trying to you know if it's your black tank now you're going to freak out or your gray tank you need to find a place to dump or you know your fresh water tank now you're freaking out because you don't know if you're truly empty or not so these things the way this works is going to give you a lot more information and it's really not going to be that hard to install. I'm pretty sure almost anybody with uh, just some basic knowledge of some hand tools or whatever can go ahead and get this done. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop out this control panel. As I take this out, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you a little bit as to what I'm doing. My game plan is to still use this control panel because this is my generator reader uh, readout for hours, my start switch, and this is all my... Uh, hot water heater, my water pump, and my tank heaters are all in here. What I plan on doing is just cutting out the existing piece right there and then mounting this where that goes. And I think that's going to look pretty good. So I'm just going to use like a little Dremel and cut out this old system. So now as far as the propane goes, my tank is actually right here underneath the seat. And the uh, thing is you have to run a wire down to it from here because it has to be able to read. Um, so we have to put this gauge in. This gauge has the wires right here that's going to allow us, allow the system here to read it. One's going to go to ground, one's going to go to the system. As far as I know, it doesn't matter which is which. So uh, the tank is here. This is up here. There's no way to run a wire here to here. Now a while back I did a solar install on this vehicle and I had to remove this refrigerator because I mounted my panels right here on the entrance. If you're interested in that check my uh, RV videos down below in, the, or in my playlist and uh, you can see that. So while I had the refrigerator out I took the liberty of removing this panel and running a wire right here all my wires for this panel run in the bottom of this cabinet right here so what I did is I ran a wire up through the floor up here across and I have a red wire hanging out in here that is ready for man the propane so that's going to make life easy because, like I said, I already had this all apart and I needed to run a wire. I mean, this is like solid walls. There's no way of running it that way. 
So just things you have to think about. Now, as far as like the sensors go, these only use two wires. One goes to the ground, the chassis ground, and the other one, all three sensors that you're gonna run here, all these blue wires will get tied together. So basically the way they work it here is on the top of these, and I'm sorry this thing not want to focus too good. So you have these tabs right here. Depending on what you're using it for, you're gonna go ahead and cut the tab. It's default to fresh, but if you're gonna use it for black or gray, you're gonna cut it. And if you happen to have to stack these things because your tank is really long, then you're also gonna trim the one tab and tell it that it's top or bottom as well. So that way the unit knows what thing it's talking to, but it's gonna be pretty easy. I'm just gonna use the existing wiring that comes into here. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and tie the wires together and then just hook it. Um, we're just gonna hook it to that one blue wire the sea level so that it'll be pretty easy and I'll go over it again later now every install is going to be different depending on your RV now I have two water pump switches on this vehicle one is down there in my water bay and uh, I have an exterior shower I could turn on the water pump from there and I also have a water pump switch from here now the thing is see this red LED light on this panel Maybe now you can see it. That's what's tied to my water pump. So, that being said, I didn't want to lose the functionality of the uh, light right here. Um, this has a pump switch and it has a light. I really don't want to use the pump switch. I want to keep everything down here symmetrical. But I do want to get this light to work. So I had to figure out what would trigger the light on here. And doing some probing, um, I had to just test these wires on that go into the circuit board. And I found this one wire, this one little purple wire, is the one uh, that triggers it. Use my little voltmeter here. And just through process, I had it lit up and I went through and I tested everything for 12 volts. When I found one that had 12, when I hit the switch, it went out. So I pinned it into here, I went outside, uh, turned on that switch, and then it came on from here, so that told me it was working. So got that figured out. So now we can proceed with mounting the uh, sensors, and I'll show you how to figure out what wire. I got a slick little way to show you what wire is actually your uh, tank sensors. So this is my freshwater tank. All the tanks are going to be the same except for they're going to be underneath and that's going to be harder to film. So I figured this is going to be the easiest way. So this procedure is going to follow through for all three tanks. Okay. So you just, you're going to have to do a little research and figure out what tanks what. So this wire here, this white wire is a ground wire. And then what we have here is we have our three sensors. So what happens is water conducts. We know this like if you drop your cell phone in the pool, it stops working. Hopefully it'll dry out. It'll come back when the water leaves and it's no longer creating a short. Um, if you're unfortunate and drop it in the uh, ocean, then the salt water is going to definitely short everything and won't come back. But <laughs> um, So basically what you have here is a probe. So when the water gets to here, it's going to make contact with the ground. And that's how it knows it's one-third full or one-third empty. If it touches this one, then it's going to light up the second LED. So each one of these represents an LED on the panel. And then basically these three wires get hooked to here. Now for our purposes, this is the only wire we need to worry about. This is what we're going to hook the blue wire from our sensor to to send the signal back. So basically uh, the panel that I removed had a little circuit circuitry in it. And kind of like the uh, C-level it knew which LED, and probably there's different resistance values maybe when it read that, it knew which LED to light up. I'm not 100% sure how that works, but it seems to all multiplex through one wire, like the C level, so some kind of circuitry going on. But the only thing we have here is we have this white wire down here. 
that we're going to use that we're going to ground our sea level to. And then we're going to tie the blue wires to this. So like I said, you got all these wires from the tank. We have a yellow, green, and orange. They all go to the red. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut these two wires. And then I'm going to show you a little trick here. So I have my, I have a set of alligator clips here on the red and white wire. And what I've done is I've hooked it to a 9 volt battery. So now I'm sending 9 volts up that red wire and now I can go inside the vehicle and find out which wire actually has 9 volts. And then we know that that's one of our sensor wires. Sorry if I seem all sweaty. It is August in Florida. It is very, very hot to be doing this. So I forgot to mention, you want to make sure you have the circuit board totally disconnected. You don't want to send any voltage. So. I'm just going to take a guess and hopefully maybe they ran the same color wire, which I don't think they do, but we're going to try red. We're going to start with that one and see if it has 9 volts. And nope. Wait, it does. Well, it's actually reading 11. There we go, 8 volts right there on the blue wire. See, this is why you test this stuff. And this is why it, it pays to use a different voltage. 9 volt produces enough power. You can even use a, a 1.5 volt, but it's just kind of harder to clip to. A 9 volt's easy to uh, test. So see, of course the factory didn't follow the uh, color code, so... I'm going to double check this blue wire. 8 volts right here. And you got to figure that's a lot of wire too. I'm going to lose a little bit of voltage. So there we have it. The blue wire there is tank sensor number one. So we're going to go ahead and cut that. And now you're going to go ahead and do that for the other two tanks as well. And then you'll know what, uh, what three leads you need to go ahead and screw to mount that. All right, I have... Uh, my three tank wires. So what I'm going to do is so I don't lose track of them, I'm going to go ahead and crimp all three together. Because we're still going to need more wires in here. There's going to be a positive and negative, positive and ground, so to power the other units. So I want to just keep track of these three for now. But let me know what you think. Was that not a pretty trick little method to go ahead and figure out what wires what? Because see, obviously the old unit needed to know it used each wire to tell what tank it was to where now what's going to happen is all three of those senders are going to come through here and because they're all combined it's going to be like one unit and uh, you know sea level just uses the actual gauges itself to tell the unit which it is so here we have it man look at it And go figure, Jayco used all red and white on all three tanks, so there would have been no way to figure out what was what coming back up here. I'm pretty sure somewhere shortly in this little loop right here is where all those things got combined. So, there we have it. And I still have the 9 volt connected, so we can test. Make sure we got a good connection here. Still reading voltage, so we know that's a good crimp. And the only thing I got left now is a red, which I already know is positive. We already tested that. I'm pretty sure that this one here is ground. Yep. And then we have an orange, which I have no idea where that goes there's no voltage on it and then we know the purple and black is for the pump so alright I think we got this figured out also if you're struggling with it I appreciate sure I can go online and look up this panel and get the color codes but I said the color codes really aren't going to 
Well, I guess they would have worked up here. Might have worked. But still, you know, we never know what the guys in the factory do. So I just, well, just want to make sure I'm right on this. Like I said, if you got the owner's manual, you guess you could do that too. For some reason I just thought about that. But at least I just want to make sure. At least now I know I have continuity between every tank and I know everything's working good. So, all right. Now let's go back outside and I'll show you how to mount the uh, actual reader. Sea level says to go ahead and prep the tank by sanding it or scuffing it some way to make sure it's going to adhere. It's probably not as important on this inside tank as it is the outside tank, so it's been kind of dirty. But um, like I said, I'm just going to do the inside one to show you. So um, I imagine you could probably use like a uh, 3M Scotch Bright or something. Had to do this. Basically, I want to try to make the, the sensor down the center as much as possible to account for a little bit of a bow right there. Okay, now we have to figure out how we need to mount these sensors. So, according to sea level, I have a 17 inch tank and a closer stack DS's. And now it also wants you to have them equal length. So, I figure by removing the bottom three off of each section it is going to get me close to the desired length um, so right there almost 16 inches and it says right here um, work it to the closest inch and a half so I'm within that inch and a half so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and <laughs> very nervously cut the bottom three here and then up top here we need to tell it it's the top sensor. Alright, so we got one, two, three right there. We're going to cut it. Oh boy, it makes me nervous. And then we have our three tabs here. This is black, top, and gray. So, not really sure how to go about this. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of do it at a little bit of an angle. I think basically you can see that the circuit trace goes up here. So I think just as long as you break that trace, you're okay. Let me go ahead and strip this back, make it a little bit easier. That way, not doing it while it's mounted. Alright. Actually, I want to mount the bottom one first. Because to me, empty is more critical, so I want to make sure it's closer to the bottom than it is the top. Alright, so three. And again, I don't need to, to do anything to these because these are not... If this was the black tank, I would cut that one. If it was the gray tank, I would cut that one. Again, let's go ahead and strip these wires and just prep them. So I really don't want to yank on these things when they're freshly stuck on. So, Alright, here we go. According to their instructions, they say to stick it an eighth to a quarter inch away from the bottom because it, it accounts for the bow in the tank. Um, mine actually feeds out of the bottom. My feed line's right here out of the bottom, so I'm kind of hoping. <sighs> the two black wires together. And we'll go ahead and connect these two blue wires together. And go ahead and crimp that together. And 
All right, now we just need the red wire. Don't forget that's the one that's going to go that goes down to the uh, to the control panel. And we need the white wire that was our ground. And just take note where your wires run because these things are here in the tank. If I would have ran these over the wires, it might have been putting a little bit of extra strain on them, so we don't want to do that. And I don't want that green wire shorting on anything, so there we have it. All right, let's go mount the panel up and see how everything looks. All right, so going down the list of wires, it does say that the um, white wire is the pump LED. So I'm going to use this tap connector. I'm usually not too big of a fan of those things, but we're inside. It's not exposed to the weather or anything, so we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Next, red, 12 volts. Black for ground, which in this scenario is probably white. It's the way they like to do things in the RVs. All right, blue, tank senders, which is, we remember we already put the crimp on there for that. All right, green, LPG tank. Which I already know it goes to this red wire because I ran it. Common alarm output, so I don't know really quite what that is. So, so from there, this should work now. At least it's going to tell us fresh water. I don't have the other two hooked up yet. Battery 12.9, fresh, STA, what does that mean? Ah, my little green light works for the pump. You guys can see maybe, see it? Ah, awesome. Alright, i got to figure out what the heck STA means. Okay, so reading the instructions, uh, I'm supposed to program this thing to let it know it has two sensors. So I think that's the problem. So it says, hold down the tank that you want and then hold down this for 10 seconds. So I need 25E for two sensors. It should now read 05E, zero sensor disabled, 15E, one sender, 25E, two senders based on the current. There are only two options. The display will not work if more than two senders. To change the numbers, press the tank button. Uh, when the display shows the number, press the battery button. Each tank will need to be calibrated individually using this procedure. There we go. Now we got a reading 48%. Oh, there we go. Which I think is about right. So, uh, the process for the other two tanks is going to be exactly the same, so right now I'm going to go outside and show you how to do the propane hookup. Alright, we can see this is held on by four clips, so we just need to try to gently pry these up and get this off of here. Alright, I want to just make a note that it's in between one half and a quarter right there. Um, now sea level says you have to calibrate the unit to do this, but the tank has to be full in order for you to do that, so uh, I'll have to calibrate it next time I go out. We'll just top off this propane tank. Uh, wow. This thing does not want to give up without a fight. Oh, okay. Pick for the win.
I had the one wire here wired to the sea level gauge. The other one's going to go to ground, so now we need to go underneath here and find a good place to ground that gauge too. We'll just screw it to here. Using the wire brush, we're going to scrape away that paint right there. And now we just figure out how long we need to make this. There we go. Now I got a little black paint here to fix what I uh, just painted up. That way it doesn't rust. And now I'll just get a uh, zip tie and support these two wires here a little bit so they're not dangling down so much. All right, so, all right, well, we got a reading of zero and that's understandable. You have to program this thing. So what I'm gonna have to do is, uh, next time I take the RV out, I'll stop somewhere that has propane. I'll just fill up the tank and then I'll go ahead and set this. But for the time being, I mean, it is wired up, so. It's the most important thing. The thing I got left now is I'm gonna have to figure out how wide that is, and then I'm gonna have to cut this and mount it. All right, let's get the Dremel. All right, now here comes the foam part. Now we gotta cut into this panel and mount it. I don't know why C level didn't give like a template that would have been nice. So I had to sit there with the tape measure and measure the actual opening and kind of make my own out of paper. So, here goes nothing. Look at that, fits perfect. Perfecto. All right, I'm just gonna go get a file and uh, smooth out this so it's, it's flush. Look at that. Looks like the factory put it in. So just for the heck of it, I went ahead and programmed the LP. It thinks at 100. I'll just recalibrate it when I do fill a tank, but I, I just want to make sure it would show anything. I still don't have the black or the gray tanks wired up. Like I said, that's going to be the same exact process that we did for the other tank. And there's no point showing you the steps repetitively. Plus, like, my gray tank is, like, way up there. It's going to be hard to see. So you get the gist of it by me just showing you the uh, fresh water tank. I mean, it's, like I said, it's all the same process. You get the same four wires. You ground your three wires. And you're just looking for that one wire, like I said, which we already found when we diagnosed this. So there's my fresh. And then there's battery. It says 12.8, which close the uh, go power says I'm at 13. So, alrighty, that should do it for the install. Hopefully, this was clear, concise, and help you make a formed decision. If you're looking for a unit like this, hopefully, you know, it showed you how to do this the proper way. It's not very hard at all. It really isn't very hard. With just a simple multimeter and a couple of hand tools, you should be able to get this done. If you're not comfortable with it, you can get somebody, but I really do believe in this system. This is why I'm putting it in, and full disclosure, I have nothing to do with C-Level. I'm just a customer. I saw the product. I really liked it, and uh, I went ahead and purchased it because, you know, like I said, I wanted to add the tank monitoring or the uh, propane monitoring and I just didn't want to have problems with the other tanks which like I said this being a brand new vehicle I already had a couple of glitches with my black tank so it was just time to go ahead and do that so hopefully you found some formative hopefully it taught you how to go ahead and do this and you liked it hopefully you subscribe to the channel for more RV how to camping trips if you like muscle cars and, and vlogging about life and stuff like that hopefully you subscribe so Thanks again. Uh, links down below to some of this stuff uh, in my Amazon store if you'd like to support the channel. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you use that. I get a little kickback for that. Uh, there's also other links for other cool stuff we have for the channel. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, comments. Appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. All right, before I end the video, there's two things I meant to add. I wanted to show you guys the app. This is what it looks like, and it shows you. Um, everything I have everything hooked up that's why those tanks are reading zero 
on our last trip we emptied the tanks before we came home so there's almost nothing in them that shouldn't be reading because we flushed the toilet maybe two three times and that's it um, so I wanted to show you the app and then number two Garnet the maker of the sea level two recommends that you spray the little circuit boards the strips that you put on the tanks with like a rubberized undercoating or something to protect the circuit boards from road debris I use the stuff they use for the roof for the um, forget the name of it it's a, it's a tape that goes Eternabon the Eternabon tape that's what I use to cover mine I just really didn't want to spray all that goopy stuff on the tanks and then that way if I ever have a problem with the sensors um, then I'd have to clean all that tar back up so uh, I use the Eternabon and I, don't know, I think it's gonna do pretty good um, so I mean it's designed to be up on your roof I don't know why underneath the vehicle would be any different I mean it seems pretty strong and flexible so that's what I use but I just want to let you know that's what they recommended because I didn't show actually mounting my under tank uh, sensor so I wanted to throw that important fact in there okay now we'll end the video thanks <laughs>